Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s Television Network. My name is Wiley Drake. It's been my privilege now to serve since the year 2000 as the chairman of our group, as well as one of the founders. And we have opened now not only the television channel, but we have opened the prayer channel. If you'd like to call in on the prayer channel, the prayer number is simply this, 712-432-1690. 712-432-1690. Call that number. It will ask you for your access code. That does not identify you. That only identifies me and the code for the call. And then you'll be live on the line with us. During this time, we will hear a, a signal, and that means someone has joined us. We will ask those that join us to identify themselves and tell us where they're calling from. However, that is not necessarily required. If you would like to remain unknown, if you would like to remain anonymous, that's perfectly all right with us. We have one caller on the line with us. Caller, would you like to identify yourself? All right, thank you so much. Uh, we do welcome you to the call line. This is a prayer line. We refer to this telephone line as a CCC. CCC simply means uh, Congressional Communications Channel. And uh, we thank you for that. We have another ministry called First Responders. And uh, first responders are those that we pray for on a daily basis. First responders, in our definition, uh, has to do with those that indeed are first responses to emergencies. The first one, of course, being the military. The second being the police and local sheriff's departments, local law enforcement officials. And then the rest of the list goes on. Uh, to include those that are in paramedic circumstances, those that drive ambulances, those that are involved in carrying uh, the sick, the wounded, and that kind of thing. And so uh, we do welcome you and ask you to pray for them. Uh, I am in the upper room prayer room. We have a prayer room here in California called the Upper Room. Uh, that's because it's upstairs and because my dear wife, Listen, Peter, are you talking to me, or what are you doing? I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, uh, Peter is in the prayer room with me this morning, Peter Magsant. Uh He is uh, in charge of uh, communications in all aspects with those that are first responders. If you have a, a friend, if you are a paramedic, a policeman, a fireman, a military person, if you would like to be added on his list, I'm going to tell you how you can get in touch with him, or rather, he is going to tell you uh, how to get in touch with him. His name is Peter, P-E-T-E-R, Maxson, M-A-X-A-N-T, and he does uh, maintain a current list of those first responders for two reasons. Number one, so we can know who they are, and number two, so we can pray for them in particular. So, Peter, would you give our listening audience how to get in touch with you? Well, I just got this phone, and uh, I'm trying to find. Uh, I'm trying to find the phone number to it. You want, you're talking about your new number. Yeah, my new okay, number. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what I put it under on mine. I have it under Peter Broadcast. There you go. And uh, that is uh, uh, the number that uh, that I'm. I, I just. It's ringing now, but I'm going to hang on. Oh, up. there you go. Yeah. All right. The number, ladies and gentlemen, for the Peter Broadcast to share on this prayer line, your prayer request, the phone number is area code 714-576-1561. Now, that's Peter's personal cell phone. He set up a separate phone yes. for this particular part of the ministry as well as other parts of the ministry. In the very near future, we're going to start uh, doing a thing <clears throat> on somewhat of a regular basis. We need your prayers. In fact, I'm going to be sharing some things with you this morning 
some scheduled items that are already scheduled and others that we are wanting to schedule. And uh, uh, I give you that schedule for two or three reasons. Number one, <clears throat> so you can write it down and know when we're meeting, when and where and how. But number two, we, I have a slogan here about involvement <clears throat> in reference to prayer, in reference to ministry, in reference to all that we do. My little slogan is, you can be boots on the ground or prayer in the air. Boots on the ground means you're there. For example, right now, I am boots on the ground in the upper room prayer room. Now, if you live anywhere near the corner of Melrose and Western in Buena Park, California, you're welcome to do what Peter just did. Peter walked up the stairs, put his boots under the table, and he is in the prayer room with me as we speak. Now, if you'd like to come, you're welcome to do so. All you have to do is come here to the prayer room. It's located at 6801 Western Avenue in the city of Buena Park. Now, you may be a long way from that, or you may be around the corner, but if you'd like to join us, you can join us by being prayer in the air. And the way your prayer in the air is to come on this phone line, 712-432-1690. Put in your access code, 399-430-POUND, and you will be connected. Now, as I said, you will be asked to identify yourself, but you have my permission as a facilitator uh, to be anonymous if you would so desire. You see, we don't have to know your name. We don't have to know where you're from. That does help us in our diligency to pray, but we don't have to have it, and if you'd like to keep it private, we certainly re respect your privacy. And just hang on a minute, Peter. I'll be with you in just a second. Uh, but uh, we do welcome you and do thank you for being with us today and trust that God will continue to bless you. All right, now, Peter, you said you had something you wanted to share. Yes, and we do want to hear your feel-good stories. Uh, when it comes to firemen police officers, uh, and just about anybody that is a first responder, we want to hear your stories um, because they're just, they're feel-good stories, and I don't think that there's enough media out there that really covers the good that the police officers and firemen do. There's so many stories Amen. with all the negativeness that we hear with the police officers and everything. Uh, we really want to hear your stories. Amen. All right, Peter, thank you so much for sharing that. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, by feel-good story, he means something that is good, that has been done or has been involved with a, with a first responder, a military, police, fire, so forth. Now, uh, when you do that, please contact uh, us here on this phone line, or you can contact Peter on his phone number. And I'll give you his phone number again in just a second. Peter's phone number is 714-576-1561. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are the new media. All of you know and have in the back of your mind a lot of things when I use the word media. We have all kinds of media today. I can remember reading about early media. For example, I remember that uh, I read in the history books about the United States of America and how in the early days when there was a small group of Europeans, a small group of people that came here from overseas, they came here to this part of the world to found a nation. And uh, there was no media at that time other than the newspapers uh, around the world. In fact, there was very few of them. But we do know that there was those reporters. And those reporters were reporting all over the country, all over the world, that there was a possible revolution going on, that there were a group of people over here that came here from London and England and so forth primarily, and that they wanted to found a new nation, a new nation. They had been persecuted. 
they had been criticized. Many of them had put in, been put in jail, and uh, they wanted to go somewhere where it was free and to start a new nation. Well, they came to this part of the country, about a little over 2,000 miles from here. They are on the east coast of what is now called the United States of America, was this continent, and these men and these women and boys and girls on a little small boat came to this country and set up housekeeping, so to speak. There was nothing here except a bunch of crazy and wild Indians. <laughs> and to my Indian friends, please, I'm not, I'm not bad-mouthing you, calling you crazy, but you guys are a little bit different than most of the other people in the world. But anyway, they came here, and that was all that was here. In fact, the reason they were called Indians is because uh, Christopher Columbus uh, I think flunked in geography when he was in school. Yeah, I heard that. He, he, he thought this place was India. Uh, and so he said, if this place is India, then we need to call the people Indians. Yeah. Let's see if we can get this. Good morning and welcome to the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. Prayer Line. If you'd like to share, go ahead. If you'd like to talk to me personally, you're welcome to do so. But we are broadcasting right now, live around the world. And so if you'd like to identify yourself, go ahead. Folks, that's what happens when people decide they don't want to identify themselves. They just hang up. And that's okay. Uh, you will not anger me. You will not frustrate me if you hang up on me. I've been hung up on by professionals. <laughs> but... Uh, uh, I would reiterate and give my standard disclaimer here on this television program. If you call me on my personal cell phone, and many of you have it, I don't hesitate at all to give out my cell phone number. In fact, I'll give it to you right now. It's 714-865-8132. Now, that is my personal cell phone number. It is with me 24 hours a day. And if you call that number, I will answer the phone. Whether I'm in a meeting, or whether I'm here in the prayer room, or I'm in the automobile, or wherever I am, I will answer that phone call. Usually, immediately. Usually within the first ring. Unless, of course, I've stepped away to get another cup of coffee, or maybe sometimes I walk across the room or down the hall and forget to take my phone and it rings and I don't answer it, but that's the only circumstance. Now, if you call that number between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock, that one-hour session, we've been doing this prayer meeting for 27 years, and it was convicted upon me by the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, that when I started the television program, I was indeed neglecting the prayer time. So, I confess my sins to the Lord. I ask His forgiveness, and He forgave me. And we brought the TV show into the prayer room. I had a couple of choices. I could cancel my TV show and go to the prayer room. Or I could just let the prayer room go on without having a pastor there. And I looked at those opportunities and didn't like either one of them. So I decided here some time ago that at 9 o'clock in the morning and at 5 o'clock in the afternoon is when we have our shows. But at 9 o'clock in the morning, we would bring the show, if you will, uh, to here in uh, the prayer room. And so that's where we're at today. And uh, we have uh, two, I have two other brothers here in the prayer room. Brother Mark Anthony is here and Brother Peter Maxant is here. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Mark, if he would, I'm going to turn the camera around and uh, put the camera on him and let him uh, feel free uh, to share with us anything that he would like to pray about uh, right now. So, Brother, you're on television. Share with us anything you'd like to share. And then after you share, would you lead us in prayer? The, the Heavenly Father, I'd like to thank you for your grace and your, this opportunity praise you once again. I send out a prayer to my dear friend's son, uh, who has a series of seizures near and there. He's an autistic kid, very smart. He's just having a battle, fight for his young life right now. 
Uh, we all have certain battles. His is to get through that and to progress as a as a young man into adulthood. For that, I send out a prayer to to their family. I also like to say a prayer to first responders, citizens, and fellow shippers and people who are out there in search of what it is that they need for their own um, fulfillment as far as spiritual and religiously and individual. And in his name, say amen. 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 Brother, we thank you for that prayer, and we do agree with you. And I remind myself, as well as Brother Mark Anthony, that uh, Jesus said to all of us, if any two or three agree touching anything, he will hear and answer their prayer. And so I agree, and I hope you on the line will agree, with my brother's prayer, and we know God will answer it. We don't know how, we don't know when, but we know he will answer it. Is there anyone on the prayer line that you'd like to share? Uh, yes, Dr. This is the hitchhiker, and I was just uh, calling uh, several people on the uh, 5 o'clock prayer line. I wanted to know that you still around. Everything all right? <laughs> Well, the answer to that question is, I am still around, I am still here, and uh, everything is okay. And I'll say okay because uh, today was uh, sort of a bad day for me. Not a bad day necessarily, but it was one of those where I had a very busy week. I was up late many hours, and at 71 years of age, my body doesn't work as well as it used to. <laughs> And so I, I sort of wore me out last week, and uh, last night I went to bed early. I didn't stay up late. I went to bed uh, early, uh, early for me. I went to bed about 10 o'clock and, and uh, went to sleep and didn't wake up, I don't think, one time. But, man, I just crashed last night. And when that alarm clock went off this morning, I was very hard. I was an unhappy camper. I turned that puppy off, and I stayed in the bed. And so I played hooky from the early morning Play prayer meeting hooky. this morning. And I apologize to those faithful warriors on the prayer line. Hitchhiker is one of them. I would like to remind you that you can join this prayer line right now. I am up now. I am awake almost. <laughs> but uh, I'm fine uh, to all the prayer warriors. I'll be back on uh, tomorrow morning, of course. We'll also have our... Uh, show on tonight at 5 o'clock, so please feel free to join us tonight if you would so like. And uh, uh, Hitchhiker, uh, where are you today? Boulder, Colorado, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in... I'm just following my son. Oh, okay, somewhere in Colorado. So you're, you're hitchhiking with your son. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Riding with the wife. Amen. Taking them around to visit the friends and stuff. Okay, very good. Well, brother, we hope you have a good trip, a safe trip. Father, I would come to you for our deputy prayer warrior. Ladies and gentlemen, after I finish this prayer, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about deputy prayer warriors. If you're watching us on the TV, you might want to come on the line and talk to us about that, but we'll share with that. But uh, I am the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. Dr. Clyde Rivers is the co-chairman of the committee, of the, con the Congressional Prayer Conference. And uh, he and I work together literally worldwide. Uh, he resides quite a bit of his time in Victorville, California. That's not too terribly far from here. And I reside most of the time here in Buena Park, California. However, the both of us travel literally all over the world. My travel is primarily here in the continental United States. Dr. Rivers does also travel that same path, if you will. But he also goes to the African country of Burundi, Burundi. And uh, the reason he does that is the president of Burundi asked him to serve and then appointed him as the ambassador at large for the African country of Burundi. And so he's in Burundi quite often and traveling in other countries quite often as well. So we do thank the Lord for that opportunity. Now, as uh, men and women who pray, as we who pray to seek the Lord... 
we need your help. If you will agree to pray, and we don't have any uh, membership fees or dues or anything you have to do, except we have one requirement. If you become a prayer warrior, we will designate you as a deputy prayer warrior. Uh, these two men here in the room with me, Peter Mackett and uh, Mark Anthony, are deputy prayer warriors. We do not have membership fees or dues or anything, but all we ask them to do to qualify as a deputy prayer warrior is to say, I will do my best to pray as often as I can and as often as the Lord leads me to pray. So we just thank the Lord for uh, that opportunity. If you'd like to be appointed as a deputy prayer warrior, all you have to do is email me and say, I will pray with you, and as a prayer warrior, I want to be listed. We'll put you on our list. We don't put that list out necessarily, unless somebody calls and says, I'd like to find a deputy prayer warrior in Buena Park. Well, then I give them Peter's number or um, our other brother's number and, and share with them that. Now, at that point, uh, you're welcome. You have my freedom to put it on your business card, on your letterhead, uh, whatever you'd like to do, you can put it down as uh, Deputy Prayer Warrior, appointed by the chairman and the co-chairman, Dr. Clyde Rivers and Dr. Wiley Drake. So, with that in mind, uh, Brother Mark Anthony has led us in prayer, and uh, Brother Peter Maxson is here in the prayer room with us, and I want to ask him if he would lead us, please. Um, yes. Um, Father, we thank you for this gathering here, and we just uh, ask for your blessings on uh, our ministry, um, and pray that you will be with the policemen, the firemen, and all those that are first responders, uh, and we know, Father, the first responder is just not limited to police and fire. Um, we have a top story that um, a 15-year-old went swimming and saved 20 people that were stranded on a cliff. Mm. So we thank the Lord for that. Um, and again, Lord, we just ask it for your blessings. And uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Peter Maxson, thank you so much. We appreciate you sharing with us. And folks, if you'd like to call us and share with us, we would welcome you to be on the line with us. And... Uh, we are on television, and we thank you for being a part of this televised broadcast. Being televised uh, under the auspices of the Congressional Prayer Conference. And uh, if you would like to call us, you can reach us on that phone number that I gave out a little bit ago. And I'll give it one more time. That phone number is 712-432-1690. Access code 399-430. And so we welcome you to the prayer meeting. We welcome you to be here. And we thank you for being a part of what God is doing. Anyone else on the prayer line that would like to share a prayer request, a praise report, or just a comment? We know there's uh, some very, very important votes going on uh, on this day. Wherever you're at, you need to call and tell your senator or your representative that you would like to request that uh, they indeed vote to defund and if you want to use that word you're welcome to but if you don't want to use that term that's you know many of us as normal Christians uh, aren't used to using some of these legal terms of defunding or funding and all that the bottom line is this, folks. Planned Parenthood organization is a wealthy, wealthy place that kills little babies in the thousands every day. When this day is ended, there will be more than a thousand babies that will be dead because of Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood was started many years ago by a vicious, vile, female human being, Margaret Sanger. 
Margaret Sanger started that organization, hooked it up and herself up with an organization that is notorious in its meanness and other things, but uh, it was called the KKK, Knights of Columbus, very prejudiced, very mean, vicious organization. Margaret Sanger hooked up with them, and she had what she called the Negro Project. The Negro Project can be found, all you got to do is go online. The Negro Project was simply her process and her uh, project to do everything she could to get rid of as many Negroes as she could. <clears throat> and uh, her reasoning was very intelligent. Her reasoning was very guided by the devil, and she said that there were too many uh, Negro babies in the world, and too many Negroes growing up uh, ignorant and uh, in bad shape in this nation, and the way to deal with it was not to help them, but the way to deal with it was to just annihilate them. There was a, another human being that had a similar concept. Uh, many years before, and his name was Adolf Hitler. He said, we need to get the world cleaned of Jews. Well, we know what the Bible says about the Jews. Genesis 12, uh, verses 3 says, If you curse Israel, I'll curse you. If you bless Israel, I'll bless you. Now, we're not going into that discussion today. But I do want you to know, I believe God. I said last night to someone in a communications, when they asked me about my position on some things, one of those that I talked, he talked about, well, what about the Jews? Are we to support the Jews and so forth? And I said, well, let me check. I uh -huh. turned to Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, and I said to them, I have the book called the Bible in my hand. And it still says, uh, in fact, Dr. Ronnie, would you turn to Genesis chapter 12? Genesis chapter 12. And I told these people that I looked in my Bible, and Brother Ronnie's looking in his Bible now, uh, to look at Genesis 12. And I want him to read uh, verse 3, if he would, please. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee, that speaking to Abraham and his seed, shall all families of the earth be blessed. So, that's still in the book. And that's why I believe people want to know, like to get me, because I am uh, somewhat of notoriety in the media and the press. I am a member of the media. In fact, I believe we are one of the best medias around because we do not tell you just what you want to hear. We give you the news. The news. Good, bad, and ugly. As we mentioned earlier, we try to concentrate. We try to be a little prejudiced, if you will, in broadcasting our news. We try to broadcast the good news more often and more frequently than we do the bad news. But we do not hide anything. We are not naive. We are not stupid. We do indeed uh, tell you the whole news. And if you have a breaking news story, I don't care what it's about. If you have a breaking news story, I, as the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference and the host of the Wiley Drake Show, I will take that breaking prayer, uh, breaking news story, I will take it live on the Internet for you. And uh, we'll let you do your own announcing. You'll, you can tell us and we'll tell them. Or you can do your own thing, whatever you'd like to do. There's two ways you can do your own breaking news story. Number one, you can call it in on a special breaking news story. But, uh, telephone line. You call that breaking news telephone line and you'll have my attention immediately. And then we will put you on the air. We will give you... 
uh, a voice for your breaking news story. Now, unless you're near me, you won't be on camera because my cameras do not travel. They are with me. But if you have a breaking news story, call this number, 714-865-8132. 714-865-8132. And we'll share your breaking news story. Uh, we are very biased in our opinion. We are Judeo-Christians uh, by the documents that we have, not by our own heart's desire, nor by any other desire, nor any organization, even the Congressional Prayer Conference. But we are very biased because of two things. Number one, our birth certificate. And number two, the Constitution that helps preserve God's blessings on us. Our birth certificate. Now, I know Barry Satoro, also known as Barack Hussein Obama. At the very least, you all know his birth certificate is questionable. I have seen it, and I have seen the data. And by the way, if you'd like to see that same data that I've seen, we're, we don't hide anything from you. We're not a news media that protects our situation. If you would like to see the evidence, there is a complete case of evidence on the Internet that was put up there by Sheriff Joe Arpaio, Mike Zulo, Mike Bolin, and other men, Wiley Drake, and attorneys, uh, Orly Tates, Gary Creep, and other attorneys, Boris Swislaw, and other attorneys worked together to compile this great body of evidence that proves, in my opinion, with an overwhelming amount of evidence, that Barry Satoro and Barack Hussein Obama are not residents of the United States of America. Citizens, excuse me. They are residents, but not citizens. And if you'd like to get that data, it's a long, it's about a 70-page document. And uh, a lot of the pages are not just testimony. A lot of the pages are pictures. Pictures of the birth certificate, uh, pictures of Obama, pictures of all that he's done. And it will show you the fraud in fact, one expert in what's called forensics verification took the birth certificate that Barry Satoro turned in and looked at that birth certificate and found out that it was a sham and a fraud. In fact, this expert said it was not even a good fraud. It was done very sloppily. Uh, and very uh, just open and above board, but it had the truth hidden. So, if you would like to have that document, it's about 70 pages. All you've got to do is go to the website. And the website is this. Where's Obama's birth certificate? That question is the website. www. Where's Obama's birth certificate dot com? And you will find evidence compiled by the greatest sheriff's department, in my opinion, in the nation. This country, as it was developing, we're in the West. We're in the Wild West still. <laughs> but when this Wild West was developing, Men and women would share with each other what they found and what was going on and how to pray and so forth. In fact, the matter is, this whole West Coast was developed by the church. It wasn't the government, but it was by the church. A group of Christians. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I disagree with some of their theology, but the organization is now referred to as the Roman Catholic Organization. They began a project many years ago 
uh, as the pilgrims came here by boat from Europe, there was a group of people that came here literally on foot and horseback and wagon. No transportation in those days other than what you had. But those men and those women who were Roman Catholics, who were religionists, who were Christians, wanted to come to this country, and so they did come to America. It was not called America then, but they came to this place that we call America. And they came here just about 100 miles south of where we're located right now. We're over on the west coast in what some refer to as the land of shake and bake because we get pretty warm weather here in much of California but we also get earthquakes every day. People aren't aware of this but if you go to the uh, Richter Research Institute they're the ones that develop the Richter scale that tells you how big or how small an earthquake is. And that piece of equipment will de detect even the smallest little tremble. And uh, it also will record the big ones. <laughs> but uh, with that Richter scale, they tell us that every day, not a day goes by that we don't have several earthquakes in California and the West Coast. Now, obviously, you don't hear about them because, you know, the media... Uh, if people didn't die and buildings didn't come crashing down, they don't report it. Uh, the fact that we had a 0.5 rating on the Richter scale of an earthquake doesn't get their attention. And we don't talk about those either, so I'm not being super critical of them. But back to the history of this nation. There was a group of men and women, priests and people, and they came into California on the southern part of what is now called Baja, Mexico. Baja, California. Baja, California is Mexico. Now, over in Arizona, it's another part of Mexico and, and New Mexico and so forth. Well, they came to this country. And as they came, as I said, most of them came on foot. A few had horses, donkeys, a wagon or two. But most of them came on foot. And when they came across the border, they kept, according to the teachings of God's Word, a journal of testimonies. And they gave their testimony as they came across the border, came across into what is now California. And they would travel uh, one day at a time. You know, there's that old song that comes out, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Just give me that one day at a time. Well, those people said we're going to do it one day at a time. And uh, Mexicali. Mexicali. Mexicali, thank you. The next one over there is Mexicali, thank you. And that's a makeup, that's a word that they designed for Mexico and California, so it's Mexicali. Thank you, Mark Anthony, for sharing that. But these men and women traveled north on the west coast and they every day they would stop along about sundown they would pull up the horses they had and find a stream or a spring or a place in the shade and they would pitch camp pitching camp might be a covered wagon it might be a man on horseback might have a small tent might be a man and his wife with a small tent but they would pitch camp. The first thing they would do when they pitched camp is hold church services. They would thank God for the safe trip of the day. Amen. They would thank God that the wheels didn't fall off the wagon. They would thank God that the Indians didn't kill them. They would thank God for all of the success of the day. Now, needless to say, folks, every day wasn't a success. But they set an example for us that I believe we need to continue to follow. Whether they were attacked by Indian, Indians or rain or flood or fire, whatever they were attacked by, at the end of the day, they would pitch camp and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done with us and through us 
on this day. It would take them a day's period. Now, a day's period varied from time to time with them. But typically, when we think of a day, we think of sunrise to sunset. Now, in the Hebrew thinking of the Bible, uh, the day begins at sundown, uh, not at just the end of the day. But anyway, they would travel what they would consider to be all day, either by wagon or foot, and they would travel that day light period, about 12 or 14 hours, depending on their desire. But they would travel, and in that 12 or 14 hours, they could average, on average, about 20 miles. That's how far they could travel in a day's time. Sometimes they would travel a little further. Sometimes if it was raining and the wind was blowing and the Indians were wild, uh, they would uh, not travel quite that far. But typically, they would travel about 20 miles a day. When they got to that camp, they designated that camp at the end of the day, and they gave it a name. Roman Catholics love their leaders. Roman Catholics love their historical leaders. And so when they came across the border from a little place called Tijuana, Mexico, they traveled a short distance. They didn't travel the whole 20 miles that first day. They only traveled a short distance. And they set up camp, and they named the camp after a saint, Saint Diego. Now the rest, of course, is history. They set that camp up, and the next day or so they took off and went further north. But they designated that area as St. Diego, and we later changed that to San Diego. And you come all the way up the coast, every 20 miles or so, there is another church mission that was started by the Roman Catholics. And so they went up the coast, and there is a terminology that's used. Uh, they were like us in America. We like bells. We like the bell here in this country because when we founded our country, we wanted to have one of the symbols of our nation be a bell. We commissioned some founders in Europe to build us a liberty bell. Well, as the Roman Catholic missionaries came up the coast, they too wanted to have a bell. They named their mission after a saint, and they hung a bell on a post or stick. And that was that new work. San Diego has a bell. As you come up the coast, you travel what they later would call El Camino Real. El Camino Real. And uh, we need our Mexican here. He could explain the meaning of that exactly. But it has to do with... Uh, a group of people traveling to a spot, and wherever they would land, that's where they would build a mission, and they would plant that mission and put up a bell. We now have hundreds of bells from the south to the north part of California. Those bells are all set up on what is referred to as El Camino Real. El Camino Real. And uh, so that's that, and that's where they're at at this point. We are in the upper room prayer room. Mark Anthony is here and has already prayed. Peter has prayed. We have another person in the prayer room with us, and I'm going to manipulate the camera around a little bit and uh, get Dr. Ronnie Cruz. Dr. Uh, Ronnie Cruz, yes. El Camino Real definition is going to be for the Royal Road. Royal Road, yes. Yeah, thank you. Real is Road. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the royal road, royal not in England, yeah. but royal as in Jesus. Yeah. And so it's El Camino Real. Thank you, Mark yeah. Anthony, for sharing that. We're going to go over now to uh, Dr. Ronnie. Dr. Ronnie is one of the residents here at our <clears throat> sanctuary. And he is one of those fellows that we designate as a prophet. Uh, he may or may not consider himself a prophet, 
But by prophet, what we mean is someone who proclaims and puts forth the Word of God. And Dr. Ronnie is on a project now that he has of uh, writing and uh, producing uh, some materials. I want him, first of all, to uh, tell us that those materials and uh, anything else he'd like to share, and then lead us in prayer. Okay, Pastor, thank you. Yes, indeed, I am a prophet and re representing the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. And the message God has given me is about the kingdom. I began writing a book about the Father's kingdom. It's turned in now to a whole series of seven books. And so this is a message that the church needs to hear and the people of the world. So I'm excited about getting this message out. Now, if uh, people would like to talk with you or discuss with you or communicate with you in any way, uh, tell our listening audience how they can communicate with you, would you please? Okay, they may reach me by phone at 424-200-5026. All right, and uh, Dr. Ronnie resides here at our church. We provide for him what we call, uh, based on the scripture, prophet's chamber. There was a lady in the Old Testament and when the men of God would come to town, for whatever reason they might be there, they, they would uh, need a place to stay. And so that lady uh, designated a room as a prophet's room. And uh, I felt many years ago, and we've had many prophets here. We've had some here for just one day or less than a day. We've had others here for a longer period of time. Dr. Ronnie, you've been with us now a couple of years. And um, we provide the basics. We're not a hotel. We're not a resort. Uh, we are what many people refer to as a homeless shelter. That means people that need a place to sleep uh, can uh, come in and sleep. And for those that would uh, put a bad connotation on homeless people, uh, I would remind you that uh, Joseph and Mary were homeless. And Jesus? And Jesus yeah. was homeless. Jesus spent many of the first days of his life, we don't know how many, but many of the first days of his life, not even in a prophet's room like Dr. Ronnie is in. Right. But they spent many of their first days, because the inn was full, you all remember the story, they spent their first days in that sanctuary out in the barn. In fact, that's why we say Jesus was born in a manger. A manger is a pretty word in the language, uh, but it really uh, was nothing more than a food trough. Yeah. Just a food trough where they would put the hay uh, to keep the hay up out of the mud and the cows could eat the hay. That that's trough, right. That's right. that small trough, right. Mary being a good mother, uh, set up camp in that barn and got a small trough, a manger, and uh, wrapped her baby up in uh, soft cloth so the hay wouldn't stick him mm -hmm. and put him in that little trough when he was born. And that was the beginning of uh, that. Now, Brother Ronnie, uh, share anything you'd like to share with us. Okay, and then, Pastor, I'd like go to ahead. segue from what you just said about baby Jesus being wrapped up and cared for by his mother gently and warmly. And what you spoke of, we're speaking when we, I think, think when we began this morning about the horrendous slaughter of millions of babies in this country. Uh, in the Old Testament, there was a practice, and I'd like to read a few verses from Psalm 106, in which babies were offered to the god Molech, in sacrifice to the god Molech, parents would surrender their baby, in essence, putting the baby in the fire as an offering. And, here's, and, and the Israelites, under Solomon's leadership later, because he brought in all the pagan wives that worshipped Molech and other gods, built, built these statues to these idols, and these practices began in Israel. And in Psalms 106, the Bible says they didn't destroy the nations but were mingled among them, verse 35. In verse 36, they served their idols. And the way they did it, verse 37, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, to demons. 
Because when a person worships an idol, they're worshiping de a demon. And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus they were defiled with their own works, and went a whoring with their own inventions, inventions went after whoring after other gods. Therefore the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. And this is exactly what we've seen happen in America. God brought judgment to Israel for this, this horrendous practice and brought in, sent in other nations to rule over them. And this is what we have. We have an alien in the White House. And we have alien powers that basically have, have extended their reach to America and are ruling. And there's one other thing, Pastor, you mentioned about defunding Planned Parenthood. I came across this, an article. I just want to share a couple things with you about this horrendous practice. It's not just that they are ideologically in line with Margaret Sanger and this whole ideology of, uh, of race perfection. It's also about money. As you know, as you mentioned, Planned Parenthood has a lot of money. There's an enormous amount of money. They came across this article. Let me check it out. at skepticfiles.org. While you're getting that, let me remind our listening audience what Brother Ronnie is talking about is dollars and cents. Dollars and cents. We, Peter Maxent, Wiley Drake, and others, we give to that organization every year $540 million. Unbelievable. Now, how do we do that? We do that through our government funding. They apply for and the government grants them that funding, and every year we fund, we as a country, fund Planned Parenthood to the tune of $540 million. Now, if we were funding $5.40, it would be wrong and be too much. But the exorbitant amount of this is terrible, and what it's used for is terrible. So I would remind you, call Washington today. I want to say something to you about your personal responsibility. I hope that if you're listening to my voice, you know who your two senators are from your state. In my case, it's Diane Feinstein and Barbara Box. And then I also hope that with your zip code, you will go online and find out exactly which one of the members of the United States House of Representatives is. And he is, in my case, a fellow by the name of uh, Ed Royce. And I will call the White House switchboard today and ask for those three names, one at a time, and I will tell them very succinctly and very simply, please, please defund Planned Parenthood. Now, if you don't like to use political terms, that's okay. You can simply say as a housewife, I had a little teenager tell me yesterday, <clears throat> she called and left a message. And I said, would you, would you mind repeating to me, would you mind telling me exactly what you said? She said, well, I'm not exactly sure, but I said something like this. Please don't give any more money to Planned Parenthood to kill babies. Mm. Now, from the mouth of a child. Amen. Amen. You can say defund or whatever you want to use, but the bottom line is, mm. folks, I don't want any of my tax dollars going to kill babies, and that's what we're doing. So, Brother Ronnie, go ahead okay. and get I want to share a couple of things in this article. It's entitled, 100 Uses for a Dead Baby. And it underscores the fact that the abortion industry, you mentioned how much money Planned Parenthood has and they get every year. Basically what we're doing is we're underwriting as American citizens an enormous business is what we're doing. Yep. So that they can make enormous amounts of property uh, uh, profits. And it says here that there are three ways... A triple profit can be made from, from killing babies. First is from the abortion itself. The second comes from the sale of the aborted baby's bodies. 
And the third comes from the, the uh, customers buying cosmetics and shampoos. By the way, it's also in shampoo as well. And here's what it says. Babies' bodies are sold by the bag. $25 a batch or up to $5,500 a pound. The sale of later term elective abortions at D.C. General Hospital brought 68000 From This is way back in between 66 and 76. The money was used to buy a TV set and cookies and soft drinks for visit, visiting professors. Wow. It's, it's horrendous the fact that these, these uh, the profits are made. And this article goes on to talk about all kinds of things too much that, that turns my stomach to even talk about about the babies that they found in a dumpster and dogs getting a hold of them and all of this kind of terrible stuff. But you know, but the bottom line is most of it, in most cases, they're actually sold for profit. They don't, they're not destroyed. And just like these babies here in the Old Testament were offered and sacrificed, now they're making money off of it. So it's horrendous. It's called, the article is called 101 Uses for a Dead Baby, and it's written by a Ph.D., um, wow. And it's uh, it it says a Baptist minister came by and found bags in uh, Odessa, Texas, opened the bags and to his heart found a little perfectly formed hands and feet of a 13-week-old baby and the complete body and pieces of a 17-week-old baby. Everything except one foot was there. He nearly died of shock. I can imagine. It's, it's, it's just horrendous. And we could go on and on and on. There's so much stuff here. But just the fact that this is a big profit industry. Well, it is hideous the way they do it and how they do it and what they do. Very hideous. Uh, Dr. Ronnie, would you pray yes. and yes. pray for anything that the Lord leads you? But I would suggest to you that you mention in your prayer these Babies that suffer so much, yes, yes. and the parents that suffer, yes. both before, during, and after. So lead us in prayer, would you? Father, we come before you, Lord, today with broken hearts for the suffering of uh, this nation at the hands of such evil. And uh, Lord, we come to you because, God, we know you care. You love every person who has ever been conceived, ever born. At every step of the way, you are the author of life. You're the conceiver of life. We, No one has come into this world apart from your hands. And so, Father, we come to you on behalf of uh, the innocent unborn in this country, and we ask God for your mercy upon this nation for not protecting them. Yes. And, Lord, I ask you, Father, God, we know that you brought judgment upon Israel for their terrible practices. And Lord, ours are even worse. Mm -hmm. And so we know that we are under your judgment here as a people, and yet you've had mercy because there's a remnant here seeking to serve you, and we thank you for hearing our prayers. And God, we're asking you, Lord, that our land would be cleansed with such evil. And we ask you to help those who are writing to Congress to defund and to keep uh, Planned Parenthood from being supported by the American people as a first step. We ask you to bless the efforts of the, all of the states that are uh, having amendments to uh, protect life in the womb. And I ask that at the national level you would help uh, your, the leaders in Congress in both houses to have the courage to do the right thing, to speak up for Amen. protecting human life. And Father, we ask you to be with those, those parents who, have, uh, who are considering uh, this, this terrible thing to... Lord, to be convicted by your spirit and to withdraw and, and to protect the life of the, uh, the child in the womb. And we ask for those who have, uh, who have yielded up their babies for this, for this uh, sacrifice, as it will, to the evil one. Mm -hmm. Lord, that they would, God, you would help them to come for, for forgiveness and cleansing and that you would heal them, Lord. Heal their hearts and their, their minds, the men and the women. And God, we ask you, Lord, to be with our country and help our pastors to speak out. Help yes, uh, be with yes. Pastor Wiley and the others in preparation for these meetings coming up in Dallas and Birmingham and Washington, these important gatherings. And Lord, may there be a mighty breath of heaven upon those who gather and anointing to speak your word boldly, to stand firmly, to engage properly, Lord, and to spread a, the news of 
of awakening and uh, preach with conviction and power that your spirit would move across this land. Yes. That a mighty prairie fire of revival would awaken your people, dear God, that we would say no more, Lord, and we would raise up a standard for righteousness. Oh, Father, hear our prayers, hear our cries. You promised in Second Chronicles 7, 14 that you would hear our prayers, that you would bring healing. And God, we're asking, Lord, for a mighty outpouring of your, of your spirit. And we'll thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching us on television or listening to us on the radio or television, I would give you a phone number and encourage you to make three phone calls. You can call the switchboard in Washington, D.C. and ask to speak to your senator. You have two. And depending on the size of your state and so forth, you have one or more representatives. So I would encourage you to call this number and... Uh, if you don't know who your senator is or who your representative is, all you have to do is give them your zip code. And a nice attendant on the phone will tell you who they are, what their name is. Once you get their name, you can ask them then to connect you to their office. <clears throat> or you can hang up and call back, whatever you want to do. But uh, the number to call, ladies and gentlemen, is in Washington, D.C., it's area code 202 224-3121. 202-224-3121. 202-224-3121. And when that phone rings today, it may be busy today for a while because there's a lot going on. But hang in there. Call that number. And as you call that number, ask for your senator. And leave a message. Personalize it. Use it. Do it. Say it any way you want to do it. But bottom line is, say, Senator Feinstein, please take money away from Planned Parenthood. Senator Boxer, please take money away from Planned Parenthood. And Congressman Ed Royce, please defund Planned Parenthood. And uh, let them know that that's your desire. And Peter? Um, don't, do you usually stress maybe the facts because they have to get the facts and they actually have to have them in their hands? No, not necessarily. We used to do that, but we've sort of changed that. If you are in the habit of sending faxes to people, mm -hmm. certainly all right to do. Call that 202 number I gave you and ask them for the fax number for the White House. Right. And they'll be glad to give it to you, or to your senator, or whatever. And of course, you can find it online as well. But I would suggest uh, that you, number one, first and foremost, make those phone calls. Find out who your senators are, find out who your member of the House is, and call their office. And then, if you would so like, you could follow up with that. It'd be good, good point. Good point that they not only a person says, hey, I got this call. Yeah, they log in the number. They log in the calls when they call, come in. and uh, uh, But then it would be good also for them to receive a fax. Uh, and it can be handwritten. It doesn't have to be on letterhead. It doesn't have to be super fancy. It can just be a simple piece of paper. And uh, I have a lady friend of mine who's a sort of a frustrated reporter, and she reports on this program once in a while. And she uses one of those little flip tablets, you know, like reporters use. And uh, quite often she will rip one of those pages out and just fax it to the president of the White House or to a senator or representative. Handwritten on a, you know, a, a, just a notebook page. Correct me if I'm wrong, too. I heard a telegram is very uh, effective. That's, that's effective, too. But it does cost a little bit more. And you can send a telegram. But the bottom line is, let them know that you were against it. are against baby killing and that we're not to spend any more money on that. All right, it's time for us to end now. I want to say thank you to Mark Anthony and Dr. Ronnie and Peter for being here with us today. And for those that were on the line with us anonymously, God bless you. May the Lord give you a good day this day. 
we can pray blessings upon you even though we don't know your name. That's okay. Yeah, that's right. And we pray that if you're reporting on this, you'll report the truth. The truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help us God. We'll be back at 5 o'clock. Wiley, live at 5. Now, that 5 o'clock is California time. That's 6 o'clock over in Arizona. That's 7 o'clock in Dallas. That's 8 o'clock in Washington, D.C. The District of Christ. Good day. God bless you. And have a great, great day. What are you doing? Are you going for appointment or sir? What are you going for? Oh, I don't even want to know. Have a good day, I sir. Think about it. You got to see you, brother. God bless. Um, are you going to look at the image? I had to this with me. Oh. And uh, this guy's good. I mean, he does brains and he does spines. Ladies and gentlemen, join us back here live at five.